Hey y'all, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. Today I'm sharing four really yummy meal ideas with you. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time to watch one of my videos, hey, I'm Beverly, a Louisiana stay-at-home mom and wife, and I share What's For Dinner videos every week, so don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is how I make fried shrimp. So go ahead and fill a deep pan halfway with some vegetable oil or canola oil. Then you can use your favorite seasoning blend to season up your shrimp. Mix it around really good and make sure all your shrimp are coated pretty evenly. And I just added a little bit more. I'm pretty generous with the seasonings. Um, I'm using the Cajun Redhead. And then I put some mustard on top of that and mix it all together really well. And after the mustard, I just cover all of the shrimp with some milk. So I've also got about a cup and a half of flour over here. And I'm just seasoning that up with some Cajun Redhead and mixing it all up really well. While you're seasoning your shrimp and your flour, you want to go ahead and heat the oil. So I have my burner set on the number three, I think. Um, you want it a little less than medium heat because if it's too hot, your shrimp are going to cook faster on the outside than they do on the inside. And then if it's too low, your shrimp are going to be really soggy. So you want that perfect temperature. And the way that you can tell is if you take like a pinch of flour and drop it in the grease. If it sizzles up, then it's good. If it doesn't sizzle, then it needs to heat up a little bit longer. But if it sizzles up and drops to the bottom, then it's too hot. So you wanna let it cool down for a little while. And you know your shrimp are done when they start to float to the top of the grease like this. So after they float to the top, I let them uh, cook for about 30 seconds to a minute more, and then I'll go ahead and take them out. So when they're all done, they're nice and crispy and golden. And I just serve these with some frozen french fries that I heated up in my air fryer. So next up is chuck steak and gravy. So the first thing that I did is heated up some olive oil in my pot. And then I seasoned both sides of the chuck steak with some Tony Sacheries. So after the pot heated up, I went ahead and added the chuck steak in there and brown it on each side for about six minutes. So when you flip it, it should be this nice dark brown color. Color is flavor when it comes to making a gravy. It does take a little extra time to brown the steak first, but it is totally worth the wait. It's worth all of that yummy flavor that you get from it. So after you brown your steak, you want to go ahead and temporarily remove it from the pot. I wanted to flip it over like that to show you all the color on the other side. But now you have all that beautiful brown color in the bottom of your pot and you want to get that up. So I was using frozen onions and bell peppers. So the water that's going to cook down from those are going to help to get the drippings off the bottom. But if you don't have frozen vegetables, you want to put just a little bit of cold water in the bottom of your pot 
to get the drippings off the bottom but you see how the drippings are coming off pretty easy because of those frozen vegetables so you want to cook these down so they're nice and soft and brown So this is pretty brown, you don't have to get them that dark, but mom life, I got distracted and away from the stove, so they got a little more brown than they needed to, but they were still fine. Um, after you're done browning the vegetables, you can go ahead and add your steak back in. After I put that back in there, I added one can of beef broth, a cap full of pica pepper sauce, I seasoned it with some Tony Sacheries and one envelope of beefy onion soup mix. So after you let all of that cook in together, you can go ahead and turn your heat on a simmer and then cover it with the lid for about two to three hours or until your meat is falling apart. So I just served this over rice with some corn and green beans and it was super yummy. Next up is ravioli casserole. So what I'm doing now is heating up some extra virgin olive oil in a pan and I'm going to cook down one onion and one tablespoon of minced garlic. So once the onions were soft, I went ahead and added in about a pound of ground beef and I seasoned that with some Tony Sacheries. So once the meat was cooked down, I went ahead and removed some of the grease, but I did also leave some because that does add flavor and we needed just a little bit of liquid in the bottom of the pan before adding the tomato sauce. So then I went ahead and added one can of tomato sauce and one can of diced tomatoes. And then I'm gonna season the sauce with this Tasty's Cheesy Seasoning. It's really good. I think it's just Parmesan cheese, oregano, and red pepper flakes. And then I went ahead and added a pinch of my favorite Italian seasoning. I found the seasoning from Marshall's. I don't even remember what it's called, but I've had it forever, and a little bit goes a long way. It's really good. And I almost forgot one teaspoon of sugar. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 and get ready to assemble the casserole. I basically do this pretty much like a lasagna. I'm just going to layer a little bit of the meat sauce and then I'm going to do some raviolis, cheese, more raviolis, meat sauce, and more cheese.
and then go ahead and pop it in the oven for about 30 minutes until the cheese is melted how you like it. This was really good and cheesy. I had also gotten the cheese filled raviolis. So this was just super comfort food. Um, we all really enjoyed this meal. So the next meal that I'm cooking is hamburger steaks and I'm just seasoning my meat with this Weber steak and chop seasoning. I'm actually making these the same night that I made the ravioli so that I wouldn't have to cook over the weekend. But I'm just seasoning this meat really generously and then I'm also going to add half a cup of breadcrumbs and I'm going to do a little bit of um, pick a pepper sauce and then about one fourth of a cup of mayonnaise. I've started using mayo in the place of eggs for hamburger steaks and meatballs because it just makes the meat so much more tender. So to start your hamburger steaks and gravy, you're going to go ahead and melt two tablespoons of butter in your pan and then saute some onions. I did sliced onions, but you could dice them if you prefer it that way. So once they started to brown up like that, I added a splash of water just to get the browning up off the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the onions for now. And then I'm going to add the hamburger steaks into the pan. And I'm going to cook those for about six to seven minutes on each side. After your hamburger steaks have browned, you can go ahead and add the onions back in. Then you can go ahead and add about half a cup to one full cup of water and some onion mushroom soup mix and mix that all around really well. Then I added a little bit of Tony's for seasoning. And now I'm going to make a browning sauce mixture to thicken up the gravy. I'm doing some cold water with cornstarch and then a little bit of kitchen bouquet. I'm going to mix that up together and then just pour it into the gravy. I like my gravy nice and thick like this, but if you don't like a really thick gravy, then you can just skip out on the cornstarch mixture. And then I wanted to show you how tender these hamburger steaks were. This was so good. You could serve it over rice or mashed potatoes. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new. See you next time. Bye.